Hey guys, so you are about to see 15 of the coolest Python projects I've made in the past three years. I start with the most basic ones that I made a few years ago and get progressively more complicated and difficult. So if you're being bored by the beginner videos, skip forward a few minutes, but if you wanna see my progression and kinda of how I got better and better through the years, then definitely stay tuned for the entire video. I think it's really cool to see that and some of the projects at the end, I'm sure are going to impress you guys. So with that being said, I'll let you enjoy the video and I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments down below. If you guys are interested in running or looking at any of the code that you see in this video, all you have to do is go to my GitHub. There will be links for each project in the description down below. Go into the project and look in this readme file and click open in Gitpod. When you do this, it's going to bring up an online IDE. This is completely free and you'll be able to see a preview of the code running on the right hand side, interact with it and play with it. Now this first project that I'm showing you is the start of my kind of graphics career if I were to say that. So before this project, all I've done with Python was very basic text kind of projects, which I'm not going to show you because they're really boring, but this was Hangman made with Pygame. Now this was really basic, but it did actually take a long time to program because I was still learning how Pygame work. Believe it or not, trying to get these circles working and stuff like that was more difficult than it looks. This next project is still one of my favorites to this day, and it is my version of Microsoft Paint with Python. Now again, we had to make this in our programming class, but you can see that it's a really basic kind of drawing program, and I added a bunch of tools that weren't required that I was really proud of when I was younger and doing this in grade 11. So just different strokes for drawing, I had this fill tool which allowed me to kind of fill different shapes uh, as you can see here I had this replace tool which replaced whatever color you selected with uh, that other color that's here I had a clear and I also added an option to save my work so if I had to go ahead and try to save my work here as paint and then I see you can see it saves up at the top here and then I can clear this and open up my work and start working on it again like that. Now, if you try to do something and close when you don't have it saved, it'll ask you if you wanna save before closing, you can do that and then it will close the program. This next project is something that's super simple, but I really wanted to show it to you guys because it kind of proves that sometimes you don't need to have a super complicated program to do something interesting and something fun, which is a turtle race in Python. Now, I actually teach programming to kids in a classroom throughout the summer, and something that I usually run in the background when they're doing their free work or whatever work it is, is this Python turtle race program. I get each kid to pick a turtle. I have it set up so you can do as many turtles as you want. And at the end of the day, we look at the text file that has all the scores and figure out which turtle won the most amount of races. Usually I'll give them a prize or do something like that, but they absolutely love watching it. And it's just something I wanted to show you guys because I really enjoy this program and it's kind of cool. So this next project is what I call email storage. So what it does is it opens up a window for you. You have to type the master password in. And once you do that, it will bring you to this little container where you can store all of your emails and the associated passwords passwords with them. You can also add a name. So for example, maybe Tim and then my email. So maybe Tim at gmail.com, which is not actually my email and then a password 1234. Click add email. It will tell you what it added and then you can see it in here. Now, if I close the program and I go back in, um, you can see that this email is still obviously here. And one of my most proud moments with this project was I actually messed with hashing, which means that the password that I have here was actually, well, kind of slightly encrypted. It's a very basic encryption algorithm, um, but that way you can't just read the plain text passwords from the text file that it's stored. This next project I made is an A star pathfinding visualization. Now, right now I don't have it set to show the steps, but essentially what you could do is draw a bunch of obstacles on the screen, click the space bar, wait a second, and then it would find a path from this point to that point that should be the shortest path. Now, this is kind of weird because it goes on diagonals because I don't have it set to have like diagonals be cost more to go to than regular blocks. And that's something I want to fix, but you can see how that works. Now, if I rerun the program, so just by simply doing this, you can see that I can actually pick my start point and end point. And if I wanted to see a visualization of how this is actually working and what the computer is doing in the background, I do show steps. And then if I draw my paths like this and hit space, you can see that it shows me exactly where we're looking for the next point. I think it's pretty cool. I'm not going to let this run because it does take a fair amount of time to get through, but you guys are welcome to play around with it on that GitHub and Git pod thing that I showed you earlier. Okay, so this is by far my favorite project that I've ever made and this is super mini golf in Pi game with real physics in 2D. Now it features a full ball shop here where you can use your coins to purchase different balls and then you can equip whatever ones you want. Um, and if you go ahead and select the course, I only have one right now, you can play 
mini golf in Pi game um, with Python. Now it has a few different power ups up here like Mulligan, Power Shot, Sticky Ball, and it's just like such an awesome project that I had a really fun time making. It's probably about 2,500 lines of code and about, I wanna say maybe 100 hours of coding because I had to do all the physics and everything completely from scratch. And you guys can just see, it's awesome. I really like it. Everyone that I show it to is really impressed by it. And um, it shows, you know, if you put enough hard work, you can make something that's really cool. So this is the full kind of score sheet here. And I won't play through all of it if you guys wanna mess with it. Again, it's in the GitHub link. So just click a link in the description and let me know how well you can do on my course. So this project is Blackjack in Python with Pygame. Now, this I probably did in my spare time over a weekend or a week or whatever, but essentially just blackjack where you can bet and you can play against the dealer. So I'll re reveal my cards here. Maybe I want to hit. I can go ahead and hit, get another card. I'm at 21, so obviously I'm going to stay and see if I can beat the dealer. Now, in this case, we actually tied, but again, you know, you can keep playing. It's a little bit glitchy. It has this not responding thing just because of the way I'm running it right now. But go ahead, play this game, and you know, let me know what you guys think of it in the description down below. So this next project is a Pi game side scrolling game. There's not really much to say about it. It's kind of just like a standard like run along the screen and avoid the obstacles. I don't know. I had fun making it. If any of you guys have been subscribed for a long time, and I mean like a really long time, you will have remembered me making this video as a tutorial series. It's still up on my channel now. If you guys are interested in learning how to make something similar similar to this, I will leave uh, or on the GitHub, you'll be able to see a link to the video for it. So this next project is the Python snake game. Now you guys can see really well why I would have made something like this because you know, Python and snakes go really well together. Uh, if you guys follow my Twitter, you would have heard that joke already. Uh, but anyways, this actually remember programming at the airport on my way home from school. So this was a pretty quick uh, code for me, probably took me about two hours. I think I finished it up on the plane on my way back. And anyways, if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to create this, I actually have one on my channel and you'll be able to see that in that GitHub link for the project. And another classic game, which is Tetris. So again, if you guys have been subscribed to the channel, maybe since like about 10,000 subscribers, you've probably seen this video tutorial. Just really simple, basic uh, Tetris game in Python. I added some tweaks to this version just to make it a little bit smoother and fix up some bugs. Uh, you know, nothing really more to say than this is Tetris. So this is another project that I actually really like and it's Sudoku. So I'm actually a big Sudoku player. I like to play on my phone a lot when I'm bored and I would say I'm pretty good. So actually what I ended up doing was first creating an algorithm that could solve any Sudoku board for me. And then what I did is create a nice GUI and allowed me to play the game. So maybe I want to try to put like a number here. I can pencil it in just by clicking the number in the box. I can delete it by hitting the delete key on my keyboard. And then if I'm ready to submit my answer, what I can do is hit enter. And if it's correct, it will go in. Now, if I try to put one here, I get an X on the bottom of my screen saying that I got that wrong. Now, if I want to fill in the board, I'm done playing or I give up, I can click the space bar and I can watch this nice little graphical representation of how the algorithm actually works. Go ahead and solve the Sudoku board for me. Now, again, I'm getting these weird errors just because of the way that I'm running this program through subline text, uh, but usually this just works fine and you know, you can see the board filled in. So this next project I'm showing you right away does not look like Python, but it's actually my Python Discord bot. Now this has been a work in progress for a long time and I'm constantly updating it, but some of the cool features it has is commands like scoreboard, which show you the top users in the uh, Discord server by messages. So you can see these are some of my staff members here that have like 5,000 messages and whatnot. You can look up individual user messages. I mean, you can read these commands, you can rep users if they've been doing a good job and helping you out in the server. And then I also have this FAQ channel, which uses a nice machine learning algorithm and you can tag the bot and uh, just ask it basic questions about myself. So like, hello, at bot, hi there, how can I help you? You could be like, how old is Tim? At not botto, at bot. And then it'll answer uh, with appropriate answers. And these aren't hard coded responses. It's a machine learning model. So it does a decent job at kind of picking that up. But if you guys want to test this out and have a look at the bot, definitely join my discord server and become a part of the community. So this next project is probably one of the most advanced projects I've ever worked on. And this is what I actually did when I streamed for 18 hours straight coding. If you haven't seen that yet, you should definitely check out the stream. I'll try to leave a link to it in the description, but remind me if I don't, where I created an online multiplayer chess game. Now you can see here that if I run two games and I'm just running this local host right now that I can actually play against myself in chess. 
Now this seems like, well, why would we have them on the same computer? Well, this actually works on a server client kind of system, which means that you can run the server on any computer on the world and as around the world, and then you can play these games from different computers. So I actually did a follow up live stream to when I created this project where I hosted the game on my own server and I played against like 20 or 30 of you guys on the stream, which was a lot of fun. And you can also check that one out on my channel. But again, really cool project. This would use sockets, Python, um, threading, all kinds of crazy modules. And I think I did this in, I don't even know what month I did this in, maybe like February or something like that, uh, but it was a big hit and I'm going to show you guys later another live stream I did where I created a cool project similar to this. So I'm sure most of you guys already know what this is, but this is a tower defense game made with Python and Pygame, and I did this in 12 hours with no breaks. It's about 1500 lines of code, so let me show it to you. So I'm sure most of you guys have already seen this, but essentially it is just like a standard tower defense game. You can buy towers on the side here using your currency. You can upgrade them if you have enough coins um, or stars by doing that. You can toggle the music on and off, and then you can buy these utility towers which allow you to strengthen things like damage and range of the towers that you place. To have the wave start running, uh, you click this pause and play button. And this took a ton of work, um, but a massive thank you to everyone that was in the stream because even today I still think about it. It was a lot of fun and I'm definitely planning on doing another one. If you want to see another one, let me know what I should make in the comments down below. And quick side note, unfortunately, you won't be able to run this project because the assets I use in here are premium paid assets, which means I can't release them for free on GitHub. All right, so this is the last and most recent Python project I made, which was probably about a few days ago, and this is a live facial detection and recognition program. Now I promise you it's not just labeling this Tim, it actually works on other images and if you don't believe me you can go check out my Twitter where I do a little bit of a longer video on kind of how it works. But this is cool, um, this is something I've always wanted to make. It just uses the facial detection module in Python and I don't know, I think it's pretty interesting as you guys can see here. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video here. I hope I gave you guys some ideas and inspiration for some Python projects. And if you did enjoy the video, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to see all of the future stuff that I'm gonna be creating. Finally, if you're not already, join the Discord server, follow me on Twitter, um, go to my Instagram, all of that fun stuff. And with that being said, I will see you guys in another video.